I want people to look at me and look at my life and think she did everything she could. And I feel like by stopping the medicine, I'm not doing everything that I could. Hi, my name is Samantha and welcome to this video. If you don't know, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer in March of 2019. I was only 22 years old. It was a whole deal. I've got other videos on my channel all about it if you're interested in that story. In this video, I really want to talk about why I am stopping my cancer meds. I want to say thank you guys so much for all your nice comments on my last video where I kind of announced that I was doing this. It's really refreshing to see that many nice comments. Of course, not every comment is positive, but I expected that. And really, I'm just here to share my story to help anyone that's going through something similar. In this video, I just wanna go through my entire thought process. And when I say my entire thought process, I really mean my entire thought process. You're gonna hear things in this video that are like untrue or maybe are kind of dark um, and that's just because, you know, I was arguing with myself for basically two whole years while I was on my hormone therapy medication and my targeted therapy medication. Right after I was diagnosed, I did chemo, I did surgery, and I did radiation. And after I finished that, I needed to start hormone therapy medication because my breast cancer fed off of estrogen, so I needed to reduce the amount of estrogen in my body to make it unlikely that the cancer would come back. I also started a targeted therapy medication, which caused a lot, a lot of side effects for me. The hormone stuff did too, but both of them combined together caused a lot of side effects. And the reason that I did that was just because there were a lot of new studies coming out about how great this medication was in um, people with my type of cancer. So I went with it. I did what the doctors recommended, what the science recommended, and uh, I did that for two whole years until I finally decided um, to stop. And so I've thought about this a lot. I finally organized all my thoughts down in this note on my phone. So what were the reasons I stopped my cancer medication? It was a lot to handle physically. These medications come with all kinds of side effects like I explained before. To name some, nausea. This was nausea that I was experiencing every night after I would take the medicine. Um, my targeted therapy would be three weeks on it, one week off, so I'd have one week break of not taking the medicine. Um, but in those three weeks, every single time I would take the medicine, I would be sick. Fatigue is another really big one, and I think I could really notice this one a lot just because I started feeling like I was an 80-year-old person. And when you go from being in your 20s and feeling like you're in your 20s to feeling like you're 80, it's a huge switch. Um, so that sucked. <laughs> Another side effect is that it really lowered my white blood count. So I was immunocompromised, which come with a bunch of other health risks and um, probably still am because I just finished. So I don't know if they've gotten back to normal yet. I had eye issues. My eyes were puffed up like all of the time. I was having bowel issues. I was having alternating diarrhea and constipation. And if you've seen some of the other videos on my channel, you know that those side effects caused me to get an anal fissure, which is super, super painful, and I had to have a procedure done to try and help that. And I had hemorrhoids, and dealing with all those sorts of things um, that really just happened because of these medications. And they also just weren't healing, so all of the normal things that you would do to heal that kind of stuff just wasn't helping. I think because of the low white blood cell count, and also because of another side effect, which is just dryness, everywhere so my skin was dry my mouth was dry so i'd get mouth sores um, my nose is dry anywhere that you can imagine that can be dry it was dry and another big side effect is joint pain it was also a lot to handle mentally this was actually probably the worst part <laughs> every day i had to gain the strength and courage to go into my bathroom and take the medicine that I knew was going to make me feel sick. Just think about doing that like every day. And I guess it's not every day. It's three out of four weeks of every, so 75% of the time. Um, I would just be sitting here on this couch and I would not want to go to bed because I knew that if I went to bed that I would have to go and take my medicine. 
And so every night I would just be sitting here and my husband Gray would be like, are you coming to bed? And I'd be like, no, I don't want to because I knew that I had to take the medicine. Toward the very end of my week off the medicine, I would start to feel better. And sometimes I wouldn't even realize that it was my last day and it would be Wednesday because Wednesday would be the day that I would always go back on my medicine. It would be Wednesday and I would be like, wow, I feel really good. I'm going to eat this ice cream. And then I'd be like, wait a second, I can't do that because I'm going to feel awful in a sec. And then I would just get like really sad. I would be like, wow, I feel good today. Like I'm actually having a good day and I know that t tonight I'm going to start three weeks of feeling awful again and so it's just a lot to gain the courage to go take the medicine. <laughs> I mentioned just taking pills normally is annoying like if you have to take six pills every night before you go to sleep it gets tiring and even if they don't make you feel bad like it's just annoying to take pills. It is a really weird thing though because usually when you take medication it's to make you feel better and so like if you have a headache, you're gonna go take some Tylenol and then you're like, okay, I know this is gonna make me feel better. Just think about though, if you have to take three pills every night that you know are gonna make you feel bad, that are gonna cause nausea. It, it really felt like no one understood what I was going through because it felt like everyone just thought that everything was fine because I was alive. I just survived stage four cancer, I survived chemo, and I survived surgery and radiation, and I'm NED, and my hair is all back now. So obviously I'm fine, and yes, like very grateful for all those things, but also no, like I was struggling every single day. One thing that really did stop me from quitting for the longest time was I would tell myself, how am I supposed to go tell my friends and family that I quit taking something that was supposed to really increase my survival chances. I just kept thinking, nobody is going to understand that. Um, people that I love obviously are gonna want me to live, so they're going to want me to keep taking these things. Like, how do I tell all these people that I don't want to do that and that I'm just going to not do that? And I still do sometimes think that the people who don't see me every single day of my life I don't think they will understand. Um, just because they don't see what I'm going through every day, they don't see how hard it is. Um, Gray was really starting to see all of that and starting to see the impact that it had on me um, when he started living with me. It's hard for you to make that call on your own and to be like, is this worth it? Um, like, am I just being dramatic? Can I just keep going and deal with it? Um, yeah, so it's really hard. You really do feel like you're alone and that no one really understands because no one does. Also, the medicine didn't really give me any sense of security. A lot of people like to stay on it because they are like, oh, this is supposed to increase my survival chances, so I want to take it. And it makes them feel better and it makes them feel less anxious. To me, that doesn't happen because I... I think I'm still going to worry about cancer coming back whether or not I'm taking this medicine. So let's just say that in 80% of people the cancer doesn't come back. That's great if you're a doctor and you're giving this medicine to 100 people. You're like, oh wow, that's awesome, I'm going to be helping 80 people. But to me, as an individual, it doesn't actually do anything because I don't know where I am in that 100 people. I could be in the 80% or I could be in the 20%. So the cancer could still come back even if I am taking the medicine. And also the statistics don't mean anything because my case is unique. There's not statistics out there about my individual scenario because no one is in my individual scenario except for me. Um, my case is unique in that I was super young when I was diagnosed and it was stage four and all that's super rare. Sure, but it's also unique because every case of cancer is unique and there's so many factors that go into everyone's individual case. I'm really just doing it because it was recommended to me and people wanted me to be doing it. Um, it, didn't, it didn't make me feel better at all. In fact, it made me feel worse because of all the stuff that it caused. <laughs> I'm still going to have that what if in the back of my mind that says what if you get cancer again and that doesn't become more intense by coming off the medicine. 
for some people it does and so that's why a lot of people stay on it because it makes them feel better it doesn't for me that's just the way that I think about it a lot of people don't agree with me on it but that's just my way of seeing it I just keep thinking what if I keep taking this medicine for five years and then the cancer still comes back I'm gonna have felt horrible for those whole five years and then the cancer still comes back. If I stop taking the medicine and then the cancer comes back, I'll at least not feel horrible for those five years. I might not even get five years. I realize that I could, I could get cancer again in a few months. But to me, it's worth it to take the chance. Um, for, for however long it is that I have, I'll at least get to live my life and enjoy it more than I would if I was on these medicines. Another thing that really kept me going is that I am really stubborn and I don't like to admit defeat. I don't like to give up. And stopping the medicine really did make me feel like I was giving up. I want to say that I'm strong enough to deal with the side effects and to keep taking the medicine. But I, um, I wasn't. <laughs> Something that Gray said to me was, it's almost it's not like you're choosing to stop the medicine. It's kind of like while you were taking the medicine, you were choosing every month to keep going. I would sit here on this couch until four in the morning on Wednesdays when I was supposed to go back on my medicine. And I would be like, if I get up and I go to sleep, I have to take my medicine again. Should I do it or should I just not? And every week I would choose to do it. And then I would go on a whole cycle. Gray said, um, you don't even have to tell people. You, you don't have to tell people that you're stopping the medicine. You can just tell people you're still doing it. And like, who cares? And um, I thought about it. I thought about not telling anyone, but I feel like I want to. Um, just because I dealt with this for so long, I want people to see that it's okay to stop. Obviously, you should talk to your doctor about this and you should talk to the people close with you about this before you decide anything because you should get all the facts. But it is okay to make these decisions for yourself if it gets to be too much for you like it did for me. <laughs> Another reason why I kept going for so long was I kept thinking, I don't know what I'm going to feel like when I'm dying. Let's say the cancer comes back and I'm dying. What if I'm sitting there dying and I'm thinking, well, what if I kept going on that medicine that I was taking? I don't want to have any possibilities of thinking what if. I want to say that I did everything I could. So that was another thing that was so hard for me, just being like, I feel like if I'm dying, all I want to do is live and I'll just think maybe I should have kept doing that medicine and maybe that would have made a difference. But I'd have no, I'd obviously have no way of knowing, but um, I didn't want to give myself the opportunity to have those thoughts. If I do die from cancer, I want people to look at me and look at my life and think she did everything she could. And I feel like by stopping the medicine, I'm not doing everything that I could. I feel like if I stop the medicine and people know about it, which I'm telling you all about it, so people know about it, people are going to look at it and be like, well, she made that decision. She put herself at risk. And so it's her fault. I know that's just like, a messed up thing to say. This was my entire thought process. I'm telling you every thought that I had, whether it was bad, it was good, it was dark. That's what I thought. And the thing that really caused this thought was the situation that we're in right now in the world with the pandemic and people not getting the vaccine and those people getting COVID and dying and people looking at them and saying, well, they didn't get the vaccine, so it's their fault they died. And people were saying this. Lots of people were saying this. It wasn't just really rude, nasty people that were saying this. Tons of people were saying this. Everywhere, all over my Facebook newsfeed. And 
And so just seeing that like every day scrolling through another news story and seeing the comments on the news story and people being like, well, they made a choice. So they, it was their fault. They, they kind of deserved it. So that really kind of messed with my mind. <laughs> And you can say that it's different. You can say that, oh, the COVID vaccine doesn't have as many side effects as these medicines had on you. Sure, you can say that, but it, it's not different. It really, it really isn't different um, because the people that aren't getting the vaccine have decided that they don't want to for whatever reason, and they should be able to make that choice, just like I should be able to make the choice that I don't want to keep doing these cancer meds. And... Like before you come at me in the comments, just cause I don't want this to be another thing. I, I was, I'm vaccinated. I am actually triple vaccinated. So don't come at me for that. But like, it's not, it's not different. It's, if someone dies, like it's not their fault. I literally woke up in the middle of the night one night panicking and crying about this. So that was really something that got in my head especially with all of that going on, it was hard. I had to tell myself that I am doing everything I can, that this is the best I can do, and um, that like it doesn't matter what other people think, that I'm the only person that knows what I can handle, and this is it. And I just have to know that and it has to be enough for me, even if it's not enough for anyone else. And I have to know that there are going to be some people um, who look at me and are like, she's making a dumb decision. If she dies, then it's her fault. Like, I just have to know that there's gonna be people who think that and I'm okay with it. Ah, here's another reason why I didn't wanna stop. I felt like stopping was being ungrateful. So here I was given this amazing opportunity, um, these medicines that lots of people don't have access to um, for whatever reason, for it's just not available in their country or they don't have the money to pay for it. Um, and they would love to have this chance to have this medicine that could increase their survival chances. And maybe, or maybe it's somebody that has like a different form of cancer or a different disease entirely that doesn't have a cure, that doesn't have medicine like this that is supposed to increase your survival chances. And those people would love to have something like this where, oh, they're feeling sick, but they're living. And so I felt like stopping it would be, would be like me giving away this opportunity and that that made me ungrateful for the opportunity that I had. And I still sometimes feel like that, honestly, like not gonna lie. Um, but I don't know, I just had to, I just had to pray about it. I had to talk, talk it through a lot. Um, yeah. Like another thing that goes along with that is I would think, why can't I just be happy that I'm alive? And, you know, I survived this disease that is deadly. It kills lots of people. And why can't I just be satisfied with the fact that I was given more time to live? And so, and, and, and I feel like also that's what people are gonna think of me too. They're gonna look at me and they're gonna be like, you're alive, you're living, so like, do what you have to do to keep living. Like, why are you so ungrateful? And the way that I kind of got around this uh, way of thinking was, uh, I thought back to when I was trying to decide between getting a mastectomy and a lumpectomy. Everyone came at me being like, well, if I had cancer, I would obviously get the full double mastectomy because I had cancer, so I have to, and obviously that's the best choice. It gives you the least amount of chance that the cancer will come back, and why wouldn't you do the drastic option? And um, first of all, that's not even true. Um, there's research that shows that like mastectomy is the same as lumpectomy plus the radiation, but like if we're ignoring that, let, like let's ignore that. There's still something to be said for the side effects that it can bring. Like if you get a mastectomy and you're choosing to do reconstruction. Um, 
that can cause a lot of side effects. Like you're dealing with fake boobs. Um, and if you choose not to do reconstruction, that can also cause a lot of um, side effects that are usually like mental side effects of like looking in the mirror and being like, wow, like that doesn't look normal. If you don't know, I chose to do a lumpectomy. We go back to the feeling secure. A lot of people who choose mastectomy, it makes them feel better. It makes them feel like they're doing um, something that increases their survival chances and taking away the chance of cancer coming back in the breast because they're taking away all of the breast tissue. People would think, why can't you just be happy getting a mastectomy? Like, who cares if you don't have real boobs if you're alive? And I feel like that's on a smaller scale but similar to this. Like, who cares if you're dealing with these side effects if you're alive? I mean, obviously, if you're choosing between side effects and being dead, having the side effects is better. Like, definitely. Every single time I will say having the side effects is better. I'm not choosing between being dead and having the side effects. I'm taking the chance of maybe being dead and having the side effects and maybe not being dead. Maybe living a fine, perfectly happy life. I could be healed right now. There could be cancer that never comes back. I mean, the cancer could never come back. One of my doctors was like, I know this person that is really level-headed. She's a doctor. And if I were giving her this decision between mastectomy and lumpectomy, she would choose mastectomy. And I know this other person that is wild and she likes to party and she likes to have a good time. And if I was giving her the option, she would probably choose lumpectomy. And she said that to me and I was like, well, I don't identify with the partier because I'm not a partier. I'm pretty calm and what are you saying? Are you saying that because I chose lumpectomy like that makes me like crazy? And that's not really like that's kind of messed up to say that like I'm still thinking this through. Neither of those options are crazy. You have to make the right decision for yourself and for your body and it's so much easier to say that you would do something without actually having to do it. So when you're actually put in the situation of having to make the decision for yourself, it's a completely different story. I didn't get a mastectomy because it wasn't the right choice for me, and continuing this medication also isn't the right choice for me. I am 25 years old. I've been fighting cancer since I was 22 years old. I just want to be 25 years old. All these medications make me feel like I'm an old lady. And I do hope to be 80 someday. I hope to live that long. And when I do live that long, then I can deal with the side effects that come with being that old. Right now, I want to live like I'm 25 in my 25 year old body with my 25 year old energy and my not joint pain. There is a time that will come for all of those things, but it's not right now. I want to live life like I can right now while I while I can. I want to I wanna sleep through the night without waking up every single hour to have a hot flash. I want to be able to focus on things all day long without having to like get up and deal with having a hot flash. Um, I want to go on hikes like I used to without having to stop because I'm having a hot flash or because my joints are in a lot of pain or because I don't have any energy. Really, I just wanna like get through the day without being tired and without being nauseous. So another thing that really annoyed me was the fact that people do do this. People stay on this medicine for however long and people do it and I can't do it. And so I just had to come to terms with the fact that I am not as good as those people. And like that was something that was like messing with my mind. And I know obviously like the situation is different for everyone. Some people have no side effects and some people have tons of side effects. So obviously the situation is completely different and I can't like think that other people are better than me or worse than me. Um, Cause on the other hand, I look back at the last two years and I think I have no idea how I did it for this long. <laughs> I'm like, I felt, sick all the time and I just every every month I would be like all right gonna do it again like how did I do that so um I'm pretty satisfied I feel like I gave it everything that I had for anyone that's going through making this decision to stop 
I think that stopping is definitely harder than starting. Um, when you start, it feels like it's the right path. It feels like it's what everyone wants you to do. It feels like it's what the science says. And um, when you stop, it kind of feels like you're alone, that um, you're the only one that really knows what's going on. And you feel like you're going against the things that people want you to do. Um, and you have to just be brave enough to finally just make the decision. Just look at how long this video is already. Like, these are all the thoughts that I had to sort out. Like I said before, prayed a lot about it, talked to Gray. Um, we had the same conversation a million different times. And this is just the decision that I made and then this is the decision that was right for me. It doesn't mean that it's right for you. You don't have to agree with it either. At first it feels like you're losing. It, it feels like I lost and cancer and the medicines won. But really I don't think it's that at all. I think it's really that I'm winning. I gained a confidence in myself and a trust that I haven't ever had before. And that's something that's pretty valuable too. So in a way, I'm thankful for that. And you know, what a way to be taught that lesson. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, I will try to respond to you. And uh, you can subscribe if you want to follow along with my adventures with cancer and whatever else. And if you like funner videos, funner is a word, it's in my dictionary, then you can check out the couples channel I have with my husband. There's also a link in the description. Yeah, that's all. Bye.